What's up guys? So I wanted to show you this, you know, uh, extruder and then um, the handles and how I went about making it. So on the extruder here, I have a die uh, with a shape on there. You can kind of see there what it is. So uh, with the extruder, I could you know, put the clay in there and pretty much extrude a handle for a mug. You know, it's really fast and convenient because you know you could uh, extrude your handle and shape it and once it sets up then you could you know go ahead and attach it on a mug but I think um, the main thing about this is the dies uh, these dies were made uh, with a 3d printer a PLA 3d printer uh, uh, but first they were uh, designed using Fusion 360. So all of these here were uh, designed by students and 3D printed. Uh, here, like I have these other dies that came with the extruder, but these dies tend to, you know, um, snap actually fairly, fairly easily. You know, like after a while, um, you can see here like this one, kind of already starting to crack and it's gonna break really easily but these guys are actually a lot more durable uh, than the acrylic ones so uh, I'm gonna show you how to design uh, a die using Fusion 360 so we could then uh, print the die and then you'll be able to uh, conveniently extrude your handles with this extruder so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that and then you'll go ahead and give it a try so we'll see you in a bit uh, and I'll be I'll be teaching you how to make the die using fusion 360 all right guys so I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use fusion 360 here so here I have opened it up this is what it looks like now I would recommend that you get yourself a mouse just because it makes it easier uh, to navigate around your form. So right now with my mouse, um, using the little uh, rotating wheel, I could zoom in and out. When I press on the wheel, I'm able to, you know, move the area around. And then when I hold shift and also press on the wheel, I'm able to uh, pan around my object and look at it from all views. So it's just more convenient. So in order to make our blank die, what we'll want to do is go up here on the create um, tabs, click on it, and then you should find the cylinder form. You click on that, it's going to ask you where you want to put it. You want to put it on the base. And I always like to start at the center, so it kind of automatically, you know, goes to the center. And then I'll click and start opening up my, my circle. For my diameter, we do have a couple uh, dimensions we need to use. So the diameter of our circle has to be 57 millimeters. So you noticed it got highlighted. I could just type it in, typed in 57, and it automatically turned into a 57 millimeter diameter circle. Click enter. When you click enter, it already pretty much becomes a cylinder, and it's asking you how thick or tall you want to make it. We also have a dimension for that, which is actually five millimeters, which it's already set. Uh, sometimes it's a 10 millimeters, but you could just, you know, click five and then hit enter. And here you have a blank die that you have made. So from this blank die, we're gonna be creating the shape of our handle. We just first got the blank one. Once we have the blank, we're gonna go back up here to the create a sketch button you click on that it's asking you again where do you want to create your sketch if I click directly on the plane of my circle I'll be able to just create my sketch directly on that now when we make this sketch the first thing we want to do is make like an outline so that we know about how big uh, the the handle is going to be like how wide so first I uh, got a couple dimensions we're going to use um, 
the first one for like on a small scale handle, it's going to be 20 by 9 millimeters. Second option will be 25 by 9 millimeters. And then the last one, 30 by 10 millimeters for a larger handle. We're going to make the small one here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the options palette and I'm going to select on the line type. I'm going to click on this button that says construction because we're making a construction line. Then I'm going to go up here to create and I'm going to hit rectangle and then I'm going to do a center rectangle. Again, it just makes it easier. Center rectangle. So I can start at the center of my circle. And from here, you know, it's going to start to make a rectangle that derives right from the center. Again, we have dimensions to use. So it's going to be 20. So I, I you know, it was highlighted. I, I typed in 20 and then I'm going to hit tab and it'll go to the next dimensions. And that one's going to be nine. So it'll be 20 by nine millimeters. And then that will be done. I could just click away and then that has made my, my construction line for where I'm going to be drawing my, my die shape. Once I have done that, you know, I'm not going to finish my sketch yet. Now I'm going to go over here on the line type and click away from construction line. And I'll go over here to create again. And I'll, I'll start with a simple shape. I'm going to make an ellipse. And I'm going to start from the center and open up my ellipse. So basically it's an oval. Again, it allows you to make dimensions. So there's, I drew, uh, I, I typed in nine, I'll hit enter. And then that has drawn an ellipse that's also inside my construction rectangle. Once I have done all of this, I could click on finish sketch and all the drawing is finished. So here's what it looks like. There's my die. There's the drawing of my oval. Uh, and it's pretty much almost done. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top here and click on extrude. And I'm going to click on the inside of my oval here. And that's going to allow me to sort of extrude. But in this case, I'm going to actually extrude down. And that's going to cut a hole on my die. If I click OK, you see now it has cut out the hole that was in the shape of my oval. And I now have a, a, a die with a shape on there that's already been cut out. Uh, it was that simple. So this is like the simplest way to go about this. Uh, I could make, you know, more elaborate shape so let's see let's delete what we just did so if i go down here to the timeline i could delete what i've done same thing with my sketch i could delete it and i just kind of went back to my blank die so again i'm gonna go to create a sketch click on the face of my circle I'm going to first do my construction line. So I'll hit construction, go to create, and I'm going to go to rectangle and do a center rectangle. Click the middle, start to expand it, and I'm going to type in 20, then tab, then 9 millimeters. I'll click away. That has given me my construction lines. Now I'm going to make a different shape. So I'm going to click away from construction and I'll, I'll go to this fit point spline. I'm zooming in with the mouse. Now with this one, I could actually play around with more of a shape. So here I'm just, you know, with this kind of randomly, not randomly, I'm also using like the little grid lines on here to stay symmetrical okay. 
So here now I have created sort of like a bean shape, uh, which again will give me like a different handle. Click on finish sketch. There's my bean shape that's been drawn. I'll click on extrude, click inside my bean shape. And instead of extruding up, I'm going to extrude down and that's going to cut a hole. And now I have a different, you know, die shape. So again, you could um, play around with this. Again, I'll, I'll go to my timeline, delete everything I've done. Construction, create a sketch, hit on the plane here construction line and I'm gonna create a rectangle center rectangle start from the center it's gonna be 20 by 9 millimeters click away click away from the construction line go to fit point spline and then there's other shapes too you know circles arcs polygons ellipses, splines, kind of curve, rectangles. So there's quite a few different shapes you could play around with. Doing the spline again and see kind of how crazy I could get with this. Just playing around. Okay, using the grids to stay symmetrical. Always adjust some of these. I finish my sketch. I could always click on some of these points and move them around. And just to kind of play around with the shape. Once that it's all done, I could go back to here, click extrude, click on the inside of my shape, and cut. So there is my shape. Once that is all done, you know, you're going to want to click save, you know, name it. Um, after you save it, you're going to click to file, and then you're going to export this into an STL file. I can't really show you right now because for some reason when I click on these, um, the recording goes blank. But yeah, you want to save it first and after that you're going to hit file and export and it's going to be exported into an STL file. So that's pretty much the process of making uh, the die and the shape on Fusion 360. Uh, Fusion 360 is free for uh, educators and students. So. Uh, you just have to, you know, um, register and, and, you know, kind of get verified and then you'll be able to have a free account that you can use for things like this. So, um, yeah, hopefully you guys are able to do this. Um, good luck. It does take a, a bit of playing around and then you'll get used to the whole idea of using the program, moving around an object. And it's actually pretty fun. This is going to get 3D printed. Um, next part, I'm going to show you guys when we uh, take it to a slicer program in order to slice it and pretty much make the file to get 3d printed so see you guys in a bit all right so after i created my die on fusion 360 and saved it as an stl file i'm going to open up um, ultimaker cura this is the slicing program so this is what it looks like um, and it's based on the printer i have uh, so the size it's already established uh, what i'm going to do is go over to the folder here and it'll open up the 
downloads and then here's my my die i open it and that's gonna automatically set the die on the bed on the platform of 3d printer you can see what it looks like you could uh, make a few modifications not too much you could uh, technically still change the size um, but not that you need to because the dimensions are already set but if for some reason your dimensions don't match what you were supposed to do we could change that and make sure it's like the 60 or 57 by 5 millimeters um, in scale and then lastly the couple things you could do over here like uh, infill I have it set as 20% infill. Once everything looks right, then we would just uh, click on slice. It's going to slice it. It's going to tell you how long it's going to take, which is going to be an hour and 45 minutes to print. You could hit on preview and kind of like see how it's going to print out. And you can see like the whole process, you know, what, how it's going to be printing. So there's the infill 20% all the way till it's finished. And then you would save it to um, a thumb drive. That thumb drive uh, goes into the 3D printer and from the 3D printer you select um, what you're gonna print and it'll start printing. So, and then, you know, again, it'll take an hour 45 minutes to be done. So that is how the process works. Uh, next video or next part of the video just shows you like the last uh, few seconds of the die being finished and then you have a die to use to make handles with um, this is fun because you could play around with different shapes and see until you find a die and a handle that works for for your work so uh, hopefully you guys were able to learn something from here and uh, that this was informative and that you're able to, you know, make your own dies and eventually make your own tools for ceramics and whatever else you want to do. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you later.